Hi, I'm uh, Vinod from Farmizen. Welcome to the organic farming course by Farmizen. Uh, let's uh, start with uh, how farming started. Let's get into a little bit of history of farming. How it started, how did it uh, convert to chemical farming and why we are going back to organic farming now. It's all the rage now. Uh, there are a few theories about organic farming and like even today a lot of scientists they keep arguing like uh, which theory is correct. So let me uh, tell what makes sense to me. So it's commonly agreed that even before uh, humans started uh, farming they were already uh, settled in villages, they were already settlements. So most of these settlements, they were near good sources of food. Like it could be near a good so river where they could like fish every day. Uh, these could be near migrating routes of uh, animals where they could uh, hunt and uh, store, smoke and store the meat for consumption over the year. So these hunter gatherers who used to live in these settlements, they used to collect uh, various tubers, fruits etc from uh, trees surrounding their villages but this was not uh, agriculture they were just foraging not uh, growing anything but slowly they started uh, propagating these uh, edible fruits and tubers so tubers if they start harvesting if they are harvesting a particular edible tuber they would leave uh, behind some of the tubers so that the plant would grow again. They would also consciously collect these tubers, plant them in a uh, plant them in a uh, place, dig and plant them in a place where the tuber would grow again. <coughs> and when these uh, settlements became too large, and when the uh, when the village would split and people would migrate, they would uh, collect seeds of these uh, fruiting trees and and other edible vegetables along with them and there they would at the new place where they settled they would uh, sow these seeds and grow these plants again so that they they have uh, constant supply of food so slowly the concept of owning land be became a thing and the first uh, crops which were grown were mostly uh, grasses like it could be wheat you, this could be millets so these were like the landscape was changed to grow these millets and uh, uh, cereal so slowly even seed selection became a thing so why did we need to uh, select seed so some of these millets right when you harvest while harvesting it was these uh, seeds would fall down just in the process of cutting them all these seeds would fall down making it harder to uh, harvest so people started uh, selecting uh, trees uh, selecting breeds which would which the seeds would uh, be attached to the panicle more and this was like first uh, form of seed selection like they started breeding crops which were easy to harvest and store. So slowly these hunter gatherers started uh, owning land and started farming. So they would uh, save seeds till monsoon come and then they would uh, broadcast these seeds. If you go to any archaeological sites, the first thing they dig up, what they found is like pots filled with seeds. This is to preserve seeds so that they have planting material for the uh, next crop they would uh, clear all the weeds and disperse these seeds so this would be called uh, the first step of agri agriculture so in the beginning they would get like tremendous success in growing these crops because the uh, soil was very fertile slowly their uh, the amount of crop they harvested would slowly go down because the fertility of the soil would decrease with each crop they took out from that soil. So what is this fertility which we will explore more. Uh, 
uh, you choose a virgin piece of land you clear it and you sow corn the first time it will come come out very well because the soil is very fertile the second time maybe a little less because uh, let's say there are four nutrients which the uh, corn plant requires to produce corn and with each crop which you harvest from that land these four nutrients uh, would go down until a time comes when corn won't grow anymore on the piece of land so how would so how are these early farmers tackling this problem so in the beginning they didn't there was plenty of land the population was uh, small so they would just clear another pa parcel of land and uh, sow the sow their crops there but slowly as population increased these farm farm boundaries became more concrete so they had to find a way to increase fertility of this land so in the beginning what they would do is somebody must have observed that uh, if you tie up cattle on the land then the soil fertility would increase uh, faster than the other uh, fallow land so they must have figured out that manure somehow it adds fertility to the soil so then uh, what they did was they would collect all the manure and spread it on the farm on the land so that uh, before sowing the crop so that it decomposes and uh, adds fertility to the soil and different cultures used to use uh, manure from different animals and another way is corn will need uh, nitrogen to grow so some uh, cultures would do something called as crop rotation that is uh, they would grow a crop let's say beans or any other pulses that grow maybe horse gram on the soil which would add back nitrogen to the soil and then they would grow the cereals again which will again use the nitrogen to grow and they they would grow for some uh, cover crop like clover etc sanhamb etc in the middle so the different uh, cultures had different uh, crop uh, rotation types so some cultures like the uh, native indians they would bury uh, fish fish which which migrate the sa salmon which migrate Uh, there will be abundance of salmon in certain seasons. So what they would do is they would uh, collect the fish and bury it in the soil, and then they would uh, plant corn, which would use up the uh, nitrogen released by the decaying fish. So these were some of the early methods to increase soil fertility. And then came irrigation. People would uh, divert streams, use animals to uh, lift water and uh, irrigate. they could increase the fertility of the soil by using external inputs and they were also not dependent on uh, rain anymore they could irrigate their fields so this could be called uh, the zenith of agriculture before 18th century <laughs> when did we shift to uh, chemical agriculture so in the 18th century when industrial uh, revolution happened in britain when uh, in europe so more people were needed in the factories to work in mills than uh, work in the fields but the population had also increased and farmers had to grow more crop using less labor and less land and there was one invention uh, one discovery which made this possible this was uh, the discovery of uh, gano bird gano so what was gano gano was already being used by aztecs to grow uh, rich crops so gano was basically sea bird uh, poop so there were islands of uh, sea birds where the sea bird would uh, nest so this created like uh, islands of gono where like uh, the gono deposits were maybe like 
hundreds of feet which you could mine and spread on your fields and grow crops so these gono islands they uh, starting people started uh, mining in this gono and people used to ship it to uh, europe and and the usa so some of these ports were uh, Gono used to be loaded. Ships would have to be uh, ships would wait for till 90 days to get filled. And once it reaches new world countries like America, farmers would uh, spread it on the field. Maybe a sack would be enough to give the same yield as like maybe 20-50 cartloads of uh, normal common yield. But uh, Gono is again a finite source. The Aztecs they were very careful to maintain this. Uh, nesting islands where the seabirds would nest so they wouldn't disturb these uh, birds so that they would come and uh, nest again and again but Europeans when they started exploiting this they were not so careful they would destroy entire uh, bird colonies so that they would they could uh, mine and take this uh, corner back so slowly it became a uh, it became rarer and rarer and a few wars were actually fought over uh, Gono, around 20-30,000 people died in this uh, Gono Pacific War. And Gono used to be called White Gold because it made this agriculture revolution possible. And by the fag end of the Gono supply, And uh, again, famine was looming on the European and American population because they were running out of guano. The population had like multiplied and uh, they were staring at definite uh, famine. But by this time, scientists have uh, figured out why guano works so well compared to, ah. compared to let's say, farmyard manure. It had uh, 10 times more nitrogen than farmyard manure, 20 times more phosphorus than uh, farmyard manure. So they had figured out that this was, it was the nitrogen and phosphorus in this manure which was uh, allowing crops to grow. And somebody had to figure out soon how to synthesize this nitrogen and phosphorus. And uh, Two scientists, Haber and uh, Bosch. So one, the first guy discovered how to make nitrogen. The second guy, Bosch, he found a way to scale this up. Now tons of uh, nitrogen fertilizer could be synthesized out of air, literally. And for inventing uh, this process, they shared a Nobel Prize, which I think they deserved <laughs> because without this process of uh, producing nitrogen fertilizer, the population wouldn't have grown to this uh, this size, and people would have certainly a lot of people would have died of starvation if not for uh, Bosch and Haber's process. So it was a wonderful thing that uh, they invented uh, nitrogen fertilizer. In like maybe it, within a decade, they could grow 10 times more uh, crops. They could harvest 10 times more grain compared to what they used to do with uh, guano. And this uh, source of fertilizer, at the time it seemed uh, endless. Because they were literally making it out of air. So this was endless. So this could be called the start of uh, chemical agriculture. Where people were making fertilizer in factories. It was not coming from any natural source anymore. People were synthesizing it. So why is... What was wrong with this? Why do we, why are we going back to 